So the next big moment in this uh, story about independence and the road to revolution is the battles of Lexington and Concord in 1775. <clears throat> so what happened was the British, they had occupied Boston now for a year, and they sent out about 700 soldiers on foot from Boston to march up to Lexington and Concord to collect an arms cache, which means a bunch of guns and bullets and uh, black powder, and also to capture um, the Sons of Liberty leaders, Samuel Adams. And so uh, they marched out on the morning, late evening of April 17th, and they arrived in Lexington on the morning of April 18th. So um, let's see. Yeah, we'll read through the notes here. The Patriots stored arms and ammunition in Concord. And the British wanted to capture the arms and ammunition. They also wanted to capture the two Patriot leaders, Sam Adams and John Can Hancock. They marched out of Boston on April 18th. And um, as they marched out, different Patriots went through the area warning everybody that the British were coming. And um, an interesting side fact, we always hear they said the British are coming, the British are coming. But remember, these people, were they Br the, the colonists, they were British. So there was no reason that they would say the British are coming. Instead, they most likely said the regulars are coming or the army is coming. Um, because they still thought of themselves as British citizens, just... Um, mistreated British citizens. So the first confrontation on April, in April 18th, was in Lexington, on Lexington Green, where there were 77 Minutemen and over 700 British soldiers. They stood face to face. The British told the, the uh, Minutemen to throw down their arms, and as they were, somebody fired. Nobody knows who fired first. It's one of the shots heard around the world, and um, they exchanged fire a couple of times, a couple of volleys back and forth, and when the smoke cleared, there were 18 Minutemen killed or wounded, and um, I believe there was maybe one British wounded. So that's where the war, the, the war really started, the fighting started. Um, now, after the Minutemen, the militia in Lexington dispersed, the British marched on to Concord to destroy supplies. And they arrived in Concord, and they found that all of the most of the ammunition and supplies were gone. They'd been moved. And uh, as they were there, they set fire to the building, the, to the depot that, where they, the supplies were held. And there were militia all in the woods all around the town. And they thought that the British were burning the town. So they attacked uh, the army, <clears throat> the British army, and they pushed them out of the town. As the British were marching all the way back to Boston, it was a 17-mile march. As they marched back, there were Minutemen on both sides of the road that were shooting and attacking different parts of this column of soldiers, of British soldiers, marching back to Boston. When all was said and done, there were over 300 British killed, wounded, or missing from that 17- to 18-mile march back to Boston. And at that point... The American army, the militia, the, the and eventually the regular army surrounded Boston and put it under siege, which which means the British were not coming out uh, because they were surrounded by an armed army of colonists. Here's a picture of Paul Revere. He Paul, he um, let's see, I believe uh, Prescott and Dawes were three riders that went to warn all the town, the different towns along the way to Lexington and Concord, that the British regulars were coming. In the end, only Prescott made it to Concord to warn Samuel Adams and um, Samuel Adams and John Hancock that the British Army was coming. Another picture from later on in the 1800s showing that in the middle of the night all of this happened. The, the British marched all night, and the warning riders went out all night to warn everybody, all the Minutemen, that the British were coming and that they had to arm themselves. Another one, you see the rider warning, these guys getting their guns. Look at even the colonial women. They knew how to handle a gun. He's, she's handing it off to the guy, getting their coats on. Good stuff. Protect the homestead.
here's an image of uh, Lexington Green, where there's a small rabble, a small group of, uh, of uh, colonial militia firing on the British. And this is at Concord Bridge, where the American, well, the the militia, the colonial militia, pushed back the British regulars. Um, after a couple of different volleys, the British started to retreat, and they started their retreat to Boston. Now, as the <clears throat> as the British made their way back to Boston, the the army, the colonial army, began to surround, or the militia, I guess you'd say, uh, they began to surround Boston to keep the British in. And this is what it looked like. The, the blue lines are the battle lines of the colonial militia. The red lines are the battle lines of the British. And you can see that they are surrounded it's either ocean or um, uh, colonial militia. Okay, then in early 1770, or well, actually, sorry, late 1775, a second Continental Congress was called. The first was a year earlier in 74. And again, representatives from the colonies met in Philadelphia to discuss what to do. Because now the British Army and the colonial militia are actively fighting each other. And this is serious. You know, this is more than just words on paper and complaints being sent over to the king. So they decided that, first of all, they were going to send the Olive Branch Petition. And an olive branch is symbolic of peace. It's from the Roman and Greek uh, time period where uh, it symbolizes peace. So they sent this petition to the king. They asked him to restore peace. They asked him to restore relations to what they were, and the king refused. He wanted to make the colonies pay. He wanted to wipe out this rebellion. And also, the Continental Congress created the Continental Army. It was a regular army where um, soldiers were paid to fight, and they were to prepare for war under the command of George Washington. They had a, It was a formal military. And so um, that army began to prepare, and Washington then took over command of the surrounding, the siege of Boston. And his job was to get his soldiers ready, to get his soldiers willing to fight. And that's what happened over the next few months into 1776. In, later in 1775 was the Battle of Bunker Hill. Remember, Boston was surrounded by American, well, we won't call them Americans yet because they haven't written the declaration, but by the colonial militia and the Continental Army. Um, the British Army, they attacked the rebels. They tried to drive them back. Um, and so the they if you see over here on Bunker Hill and Breeds Hill, uh, the... The Continental Army was stationed there, and the British troops came, and they pushed, they tried to push up the hill, and it wasn't until the America, or the, the Colonial Army there ran out of ammunition, and I mean, we're talking, the British were beaten back twice. They retreated twice, and then tried a third time to take them. It wasn't until they ran out of ammunition that the uh, Colonials left. They had to retreat. All in all, there were 2,200 British that started the battle, and 1,000 were killed or wounded. So both sides are willing to um, kill each other. Both sides are willing to take heavy losses. Both sides want and are willing to fight a war over to the colonials over their independence and or normalizing of relations, and the British bringing the colonies to heel, bringing them back under control. So... Um, in, let's see, when was it? I believe like December of, maybe November, December, um, it's not that important, but November, December of 1775, the British abandoned Boston. They see that the Americans uh, gain cannons and um, they bring them over and they're going to just decimate Boston. So they sail out of Boston and they sail up to Canada. 
um, in a retreat. And that is really encouraging to the colonials because they think they're, they can beat the British. And they're going to find out it's going to take a lot more than winning just a couple battles to beat the British. We don't need to see this. Here's a picture. These, these here are called breastworks, where big piles of dirt or earthworks, um, they're built up, and it gives the, the uh, people behind the lines protection. So you can see that the land drops off here, and that means that the British are going to be running up a hill, running up into this, these people shooting them. It's very dangerous. High loss of life. Um, bad for the, for the attacking side. Here is how the British marched up the hill. They marched up in column. That shows great discipline and, in my opinion, great stupidity <coughs> because they're easy targets. But warfare was a lot different than it was today because now we have automatic weapons, machine guns, bombs, hand grenades. Well, they had hand grenades too. But, um, you know, bad, nasty weapons to kill a lot of people at once. So now we do not fight this way shoulder to shoulder. We fight way spread out. But when you're dealing with muskets and small cannons and colonists who don't know how to use them very well, um, it wasn't really that. It was dangerous, but less loss of life than you would expect. I think this guy here is raising his hand to answer a question. Nobody's going to call on you. So just more images here of the Battle of Bunker Hill and the Battle of Breed's Hill. <coughs> 